So we're going to be looking at proof by induction. And we're going to use proof by induction for four different types of proof. Now, the textbook only takes us through summation proofs, divisibility proofs, and matrix proofs. But I've put this recurrence relation proofs in here in italics because the exam board, when they produced a mock exam paper for us, put a question like that in there. And we were all, uh, the teachers were saying, well, why have you put a recurrence um, relation proof in there? It's not in the, the spec. It's not in the textbook. And they said, oh, well, we think it could be in the spec. So I'm wanting to teach you a little bit extra. Even though it's not technically part of the specification, the exam board seemed to think that it was. So um, just trying to prepare you for as much as possible. So we're going to do a little bit more that goes beyond the textbook. It won't be that much harder. It's the same ideas that we have here. So all of these proofs, um, you'll notice I just want to kind of break down this bit we've got at the end here. So it often says stuff like N, and then there's E symbol, and then there's this capital N here. Do you remember what this means? Yeah, this means that the, the values of n are a member of the natural numbers. This is that n is a member of the z with a plus, positive integers, and we've got positive integers here. Here in this one, it says it's true for n being greater than or equal to 1. In other words, the positive integers as well. Um, and that's all, just all I've written down here. Recall that z is the set of all integers. z plus is the set of all positive integers. And so the natural numbers is equal to z plus. The natural numbers, I think of them as being called the natural numbers because they're almost like the counting numbers that would have occurred in nature, really. <coughs> so what we're going to do is think about what proof by induction actually is. So I've said here we can often use proof by induction whenever we want to show that some property holds for all integers, usually positive, all the way up to infinity. Now, we looked at this summation um, proof that we've got here before where we wanted to show that the sum of r from r equals 1 to n was a half n, n plus 1, for all members of n of the natural numbers. And we've actually done some proofs of this when we did it a long time ago. I think we did some geometric proofs. Um, we drew out different diagrams. But we're now going to try and do it with proof by induction. So I've said what we could do to try and show that it's true is we could do it for certain examples. We could pick when n is equal to 3, we could substitute it into the left-hand side. And we could just do 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6. You could then use the formula and say that it's a half times 3 times 4. And you do get that they're the same as each other. But what's the problem of trying out numbers to prove that something is true? Andrew? Then you say the reason they're very long is you have to do an infinite amount of time, which is impossible. Exactly. Like, if you want to try and um, show that it's true for all the natural numbers, you would have to prove it true for all of the natural numbers, which is not going to be possible. So we're not going to try and prove things by testing every single value when it's for all of the natural numbers. If it said something like, prove that it's true for n being between 1 and 3, well, probably the best way of doing that is to try it with a 1, a 2, and a 3. But it's not asking for that. So we need to do something different. So what actually is proof by induction? How does proof by induction actually work? So we're going to kind of hold this in our mind of the previous example that we were thinking about, the sum of the natural numbers. And what I've done here is I've put the natural numbers of, uh, sorry, doing it up to 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I'm skipping a bit, which is why I've put these dotted lines here. Then I'm going to try and prove it for n equals k. I've got n equals k plus 1, n equals k plus 2. So those are the cases. Now, the suggestion that we had just now was we could try and prove that it was true for n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. But you'd have to try all of the numbers for that actually to work. So we do something different with proof by induction. Instead of trying to prove the particular cases, we try and prove the relationship between the cases. So I'm just going to write that down here. With proof by induction, we prove the relationship between the cases. So we're not trying to show that it is true for all of these values. What we're going to try and show instead is that if it's true for this, and it's, uh, sorry, if it's true for this, then I can prove that it would also be true for the next one as well. We're going to assume that this one is true. We're going to try and assume, prove that the relationship or the, the kind of the stage of going from one to the next is true. And then what we do is we try and prove the first case. If I prove the first case and I've proven that you can go from one case to the next by that inductive logic, 
which means what proof by induction is. If I've proven this is true and I've proven the relationship is true, then in theory, I have proven that all of them are true because I've proven the relationship and I've proven one of the cases. And some of the images that you might see with this are often of like dominoes, how like you think of dominoes stacked up and lined up. We know that when do one domino falls, it knocks over the next domino. That is this idea here of proving that when one domino falls, it will hit the next domino over. And then all we do is we start with the first domino, we knock that one over and prove that it's true. And that logic sends all of the ones knocking over and the whole thing becomes true for all of the natural numbers, okay? So there's a little bit about language that we've got here. First of all, the base case, which, what part do you think the base case is actually referring to here? When n equals one, yeah, this thing here, this is the base case. It's whatever we're gonna start it off with. And then we've got an assumption. What do you think the assumption is? Good, this is the thing we are gonna assume that this is true. We don't know it's true, we're gonna assume that it's true. And then the inductive case is, yeah, it's, it's this actual sort of whole section that we've got here is the inductive case. It is the k plus one, but it's the, the process of induction. It's showing that we can go from n equals k to n equals k plus one. And then the conclusion is really kind of something we're gonna write down altogether. Yeah, Andrew. So um, is it always gonna be something like k and k plus one, or could it be a lot more complicated? No, it will like always, k it'll always be k and k plus one because we start, we're just assuming that it is true at some point on this journey and then we're gonna prove that it's true on the next bit. And so that's the, in, that's the weird thing about induction and also kind of the really smart thing about it. We're not proving that it's true for n equals k and true for n equals k plus one. We're proving if it's true for n equals k, that it's true for n equals k plus one, then this blue arrow that I've drawn in between them is a correct logical step. And that logical step can then apply to all of those different values of k meaning that the entire thing is true. So that's really kind of what's, what's the heart of proof by induction. If that idea makes you feel comfortable with that idea, this is gonna be like a really straightforward kind of process. So you have a base case, n equals one. You assume that it's true for n equals k. You then try and show that it's true, given that you've made an assumption. When you've shown that that blue arrow is true, that domino will fall and hit another one over. The whole process of, of the logic will say that the whole, um, the whole proof will be true because it will work for all natural numbers. 